Okay, so we're going to use some examples. Remember, in our last lesson, we learned that we always want the, to solve these. We want the variable to be 1 mod 8 or whatever, the, the, the um, coefficient there. So we need to think of what times 2 is going to give me 1 mod 8. Um, not because this is 1, but because we want the coefficient to be 1. Well, what you're going to find out in this particular problem is there is nothing that's going to give you 1 mod 8. So that doesn't work. So then let's think about this. Well, 1 mod 8 is always going to be a odd number, right? It's going to be 1, it's going to be 9, it's going to be 19, it's going to be um, 25 or 17, and going to be 25, and so on and so forth. So there's no integer that I can multiply by 2 that's going to give me 1 mod 8, so we'd say this has no solution. So it is possible to get no solution when doing these. Okay, and this one it says 6x equals 3 mod 11. So to solve this, I have to find out when um, the, I multi can multiply something by 6. It's going to give me um, 1 mod 11. So I look for, um, and, and I sit through and think, and if I uh, mod 11, uh, if I multiply 6 by 2, I get 12 mod 11, which does turn out to be 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, and I'm going to get 12x is equal to 6 mod 11. And so 12x is the same as 1x mod 11 equals 6 mod 11. So that means my solution is x equals everything equivalent to 6 mod 11. So as long as I uh, do something equivalent to 6 mod 11, that's going to give me 3 mod 11. Um, so for instance, if I try 6, I'm going to get 36. 36 is equivalent to 3 mod 11. Very good. If I try 12, that's going to give me 72. 72, um, when you go through and, um, oh, 12 is not 6 mod 11. Um, 17 would be. If I do 102, 102 does equal 3 mod 11 because um, 102 um, divided by 11 is 9 remainder 3. And so we can see that this is the solution to our equation. So all we have to think about is what gives me the coefficient of 1 mod whatever I'm working in. All right, so let's look at a couple more examples. This is an example that we can use that will allow us to write an equation to solve a, this problem. David has X boxes of golf balls with 12 balls each. He noticed that if he lost one of the balls, the, remain, the ball remaining, balls remaining would be a multiple of 7. What is the smallest possible value of X? Well, we know that he has this many golf balls, 12X. Okay? And if he loses one, so if we subtract one away from that, we know um, the balls remaining would be a multiple of 7. So we know this would be equivalent to... 0 mod 7. Okay, because 0 mod 7 is when you have a multiple of 7. So now we have a modular equation we can solve. We first start by adding 1, and we get 1 plus, uh, or add 1 to both sides, so you get 12x equals 1 mod 7. So we need to find out when does 12 equal 1 mod 7, because we want the variable, the coefficient of the x to be 1. Well, 12 times 1 doesn't work, 12 times 2 doesn't work, 12 times 3 does work. 12 times 3 gives you 36. 36 is equivalent to 1 mod 7. So I multiply both sides by 3, and I get 36x equals 3 mod 7. Well, this is equivalent to 1 mod 7 equals 3 mod 7. And so the answer to this problem is everything in the form 3 mod 7. So every, pro every number that's congruent to 3 mod 7 is the solution to this. So we want the smallest number congruent to 3 mod 7. Well, that would be x equal to 3. If x equals 3, that would give you 36 balls. You lose one, that gives you 35. That's the answer. Obviously, this one you could have done very easily in your head, but it helps to understand it using modular arithmetic. If the numbers get much, much bigger, um, you could do it using modular arithmetic much faster. Okay, it says find all the integers that when multiplied by 7 are 3 more than a multiple of 8. Well, that means you want a number times 7, so 7x is equal to 3 more than a multiple of 8 is just 3 mod 8. Okay, so we solve this. So when does 7, when you, when you get 1 mod 8 from a 7, well, multiply by 2 doesn't. Multiply by 3 gives you 21, that doesn't work. 28 doesn't work. 35 doesn't work, 42 doesn't work, 49 does. If you multiply by 7, you get uh, 49, which is 1 mod 8. So I multiply both sides of this equation by 7, I get 49x equals 21 mod 8. And so that's just going to give me x equals, well, this is the same equivalent to 5 mod 8. 
So my answer is everything equivalent to 5 mod 8. So 5 would work. 5 is an integer. That when you multiply it by 7, is 3 more than a multiple of 8. Um, 13, 18, 23, 20, um, uh, 31. Um, no, that's not correct. Um, so I said 5 and 13 and 21 and 29 and 37. All of these things that are 5 mod 8 are going to give you solutions. So if they said, what is the smallest two-digit number, integer, when multiplied by 7? is three more than a multiple of eight. Well, that's a pretty tough problem until you do it just like I did it, and then it's much, much easier. So that tells you an idea of how to use linear congruence to solve some modular arithmetic problems. Um, try some of the problems on the examples. Please, 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 if you have any questions on the um, uh, lesson worksheet, email them to me, and I can post, post solutions to particular problems.